Midnight Music. Coming up this week on Kings of the Rings podcast, it's a special Tuesday edition of the show as we get ready to wake up really, really freaking early for Elimination Chamber. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, right. (laughs) Somebody's got to do it. It's probably going to be me. We're going to go through everything happening at Elimination Chamber. Some little updates about WWE and WrestleMania. And did you smell what The Rock was wearing? It's pretty freaking awesome. So all that and more on episode number 368 of Kings of the Rings podcast, Chamber Danger, exclusively here on Ah, WrestleAtic Radio. Thank you very much. And it starts right now. You know, I was having a lot of difficulty trying to figure out what the name of the show was going to be. And then Chamber Danger, like, came, and I was like, this. That's it. freaking perfect. Yeah, dude, rock solid. (laughs) I can't believe I've never thought. We have Rumble of Royalties. We have Money for the Marks. How have you ever thought of Chamber Danger? I think Chamber Danger is going to be here to stay for as long as we do this show. I think this is the perfect thing. It's Chamber Chamber Danger 24, dude. Rocking down under. It's going to be great. (laughs) Yes. Chamber Danger 24. (laughs) Rocking down under. That sounds perfect. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Kings of the Rings podcast episode 368. Obviously, we just called it Chamber Danger. I am your host, King Ricky Rose. Thank you guys for joining us. Be award nominated. Uh, Kings of the Rings podcast, obviously nominated. Uh, we did not win, unfortunately, for best wrestling podcast. Did Conan win? Conan did not win. Don't, Thank God. Conan did not win. Do not worry. Do not worry. Conan did not win. So if you guys like what you're watching to, what you're listening to, please uh, leave us a like, share, subscribe. Uh, links to all of that are in the description below. Some of our merch is also in the description below as well. Links to all of that. Uh, go check that out. With me this week, we are going to, we were going to get kayfabe, but kayfabe is here in spirit. But with me, uh, back again for the um Teenth time, uh, I guess the man who is rated currently a 77 in the latest WWE, WWE 2K24, Will Tarashock. How are you? Hell, hell yeah, man. It's a work in progress. That 77 is going to be a 78 by, a t- by the time this intro is over. Just wait, <laughs> just wait, you wait and see. Uh, I am Will Tarashock, T.S. Thomas, A R A S H U K. The nine years, Ricky, this podcast reached nine years Jesus freaking during Christ. the break while we were gone. Um, I don't know the exact date, but I'm pretty sure it was the 15th, according that we were on iTunes for the first time, according to um, my Facebook memories. Wow. Which is really like the, the, the barometer I've been using <laughs> <laughs> like what I was doing nine years ago. That's literally, what, so, that's literally the only thing Facebook is good for these days. Yeah, it is. It's, oh, I, thank God I got to delete that post now. <laughs> um, so, yeah, nine years. King's Wings podcast, nine long Jesus years Christ. of doing this. Wow. So, yeah. Ricky, you came in episode like 30, 33 or 36. It, I believe it was 33 um, when Dean Ambrose cast. I believe it was 33. Yeah. yeah I'm, so, I'm, yeah, nine, nine years of podcasting. Yeah, I'm well it's over been, 300 episodes in. It's kind of fucking nuts. It's been a hell of a ride, man. Yeah. It's been a hell of a ride. <laughs> it's, a lot of fun. Absolutely. It's been a lot of fun. I'm glad we're still here doing yeah, this. Yeah, we are. We are. We are going to do this. And we are probably going to. Just, just a heads up. Um, that's not true. There have been some, some biddies on the show, actually fair amount, actually fair amount from all over the world. I say that because we have no bitches. Yeah, do we have plenty of bitches? <laughs> yeah. Show, yeah I, what are you talking about? Dave so? was a host for how long? <laughs> Dave's a bitch. <laughs> Shout out to Dave, the godfather of the Love podcast. Yeah, <laughs> godfather Ugh. of the podcast. Uh, but we are, we are experimenting with Tuesday nights. This might be a more permanent thing. And it is going to be a more permanent thing. I'm actually thinking about, we'll talk about this on the post show. We'll probably uh, changing up the format too, visual format. Ooh. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I'm, I'm intrigued by Anchor and uh, the Riverside. I looked at Riverside and I was like, ooh, I could work with this. So, oh, Riverside's dope. Yeah. Dude, Riverside's a dope. It's an amazing platform. Um, so, so I'm thinking about maybe I have to fiddle. With, I mean, we've got a month because we're all of the changes are going to happen post mania. Um, so I've got a month. Dude, to anything, fiddle it gets, with it. anything that gets us off of Skype, I am <laughs> down for. Because Skype makes my audio sound way worse than it is for whatever reason. I have no idea why. It's probably because I'm the uh, I'm the primary. It could be. That, that's probably that's probably what it is. But anywho. Folks, we are here uh, to talk wrestling, and uh, real, real quick, since since I did the whole ratings thing, I only did that because I don't know if you've been watching any of the WWE product, uh, they're being genius marketing people again. You know, they, during specific matches on SmackDown and Raw, they have revealed the the ratings of the performers in the ring for WWE 2K24. Oh, uh, that is really clever. <laughs> yeah. 
Um, so they've been releasing uh, all of that stuff very periodically, and it's actually pretty freaking clever. They also had a they had Michael Chandler on Raw last night. That that actually happened. I saw that. That, that wasn't live too. That, that was live. I, I guess I believe. I guess I believe in the internet. <laughs> yeah, I'm a little too skeptical. That for my was boots, so. that was live. Yeah. So Samantha Irvin's like, oh yeah, by the way, UFC fighter Michael Chandler. So he takes the mic and he like stands up on top of his chair and he's like, he challenges Conor McGregor. Dude. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Triple H's pious like, oh, who's that? <laughs> <laughs> It's like, oh, yeah, he works in our company. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. He does do that, doesn't he? I mean, that's a fight I'd love to see, but I don't know if I'm, I don't know if we're going to turn to our UFC podcast for a quick second. I don't even know if McGregor still fights anymore. I don't know he's, he's, he's fight on was. that Brock Lesnar deal. He just shows up whenever the hell he wants to do. Oh, uh, who? We can't say him anymore. <laughs> <laughs> the guy formerly known as the Beast who used to <laughs> wrestle at the University of Minnesota. He redacted. <laughs> redacted. <laughs> Former redacted UFC champion. <laughs> Former WWE champion. Roman Reigns' is, uh, biggest adversary for a very, very long time. Uh, but speaking of which, that was on Raw. But on SmackDown, we got what we didn't know we actually wanted. I watched this happen. So Roman comes out, and he's talking about all of this stuff. He's being Roman. And then he said, we're going to finally say that The Rock is in the bloodline. And generic face rock music comes out, which I think was the only misstep in this entire thing. And then we got Versace $500, $500 shirt wearing rock, but the sleeves were cut off. I go, oh, my God, he's gone Hollywood again. <laughs> <laughs> and then they just let him be an asshole on the mic to Utah, into the state of Utah for 10 minutes. And that's how the show ended. And I was like, yeah, I'm okay with this. I'm, I'm very okay with this. Well, I know you're a big Rock fan, and now you're probably pumped as hell that you're going to see The Rock at WrestleMania in some way, shape, or form and see The Rock perform live for the first time ever in your life. <laughs> you know? Yes, yes, so what, 100% true. So do I'm you gonna like lose, the fact I'm gonna that... I'm going to lose my mind regardless. Yeah, so do you um, like the fact that Hollywood Rock is now here? I do. I, I do I do like what they're doing. Um, I think... Well, let's... let's Go back a second to yeah. Royal, Cody Rhodes winning the Royal Rumble because it's been a while since we've, I've, we've you and I've done a I show. I talked about this with Will Gray on, but we had a really great discussion about it. Yeah, <laughs> wild decision. Uh, <laughs> yeah, because fr- by the by by that Friday it was just all over. Yeah, and they just kind of fucked themselves. So something must have happened behind the scenes with The Rock actually doing the deal. So going into Rumble, Rock wasn't doing Mania, and then somewhere between between that and like Friday. They just completely changed their mind. He he changed his mind. And they got a deal done. Yeah. Um, so and you go to the press conference. Press conference was out of this world. Fucking amazing. <laughs> like wow. I watched the press. I was like, this wow. is this is much ado about nothing. But people are gonna eat this shit up. Yeah, it was amazing. <laughs> uh, a few gripes. Um, it should have been Bailey instead of Bianca. But I understand why it's Bianca because Bianca is still the bigger star. Yeah. And she and she has a new show coming out. Uh, the show's two, already out. Already out. Yeah. To CM Punk just going just being CM Punk and the rock staring him down from the <laughs> stage was <laughs> wow. <laughs> CM Punk is gonna give two fucks and I hope he commentates WrestleMania. Um, CM Punk was absolutely brilliant. He was like he was like, dude, if you're gonna say something about me, we're gonna be fighting. Tony Khan must have been so freaking pissed. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Three. I still want on Rock versus Roman one on one, I still think that's the bigger match. That's the match I would have preferred. Mm-hmm. However, Triple H has been down this road before, and it's literally it's funny. Ten years ago, the same build. That's me in the thirty. It was Daniel Bryan. I think WWE made the right call because the fans and the marks would have ruined that storyline between Rock and Roman. Yeah, we've ruined many. One-on-one. We've ruined many of Roman main events before. Yeah, they would have. They would have ruined it. Yeah, and. So I think they made the right move by pivoting. And I was like, it's confusing as fuck. Let's give him a chance. Rock made a tweet. It's like, guys, just wait and see what happens. Cody made a tweet, a tweet as well saying, guys, wait and see what happens. Yeah. And now we got this. And I still would love to see Rock Woman one-on-one. But we're going to get it eventually. Yeah. And I'll have to fly out. Whatever the fuck I got to fly out to to go and see it. <laughs> but I'm going to go do it. <laughs> so – it's 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 bittersweet because I think heel rock is the right move. Him joining Roman is the right move, and the eventual turn, which is probably gonna happen at Mania, yeah. is gonna be even bigger for that next one on one match, even make more sense. Yeah. So in the long run, 
I think it's the right call. That being said, I can't wait for Cody to lose again. <laughs> I don't think he, can. <laughs> he can't lose again. That would be the worst Dude, thing. I'm not going to lie. He might lose again. <laughs> I, I can't have, I can't be disappointed two WrestleManias in a row. <laughs> dude, dude, you can't ruin our big blockbuster <laughs> match and then win. <laughs> <laughs> Can't do it, dude. I, I I do think Rock is a is a sleeper agent, and I and I think I genuinely think Rock Roman needs the belt. I do. If if the storyline is gonna be who is the head of the table, it needs the belt. If the storyline is you fucked me over, I'm coming for you, mm-hmm. then it doesn't. Then it doesn't. And it's just a matter of which story would you rather tell and be told. Yeah, I think I mean The Rock doesn't need the belt to solidify himself over Roman, so I think it's Correct. I think it's bigger than the belt. That's the I think it, I think it could be bigger than the belt. And I think WWE just actually gave themselves a lane to make it bigger than the belt. Yeah. So I think we'll just see what happens. I don't want to see the tag match. I don't give a fuck about the tag match to be honest. <laughs> yeah, no. I don't need to, I don't need, I don't need to see Seth wrestle twice. Like unless night one. Mm-hmm. Rock just buries Cody, and they just did, night night one ends with the whole bloodline laying over Cody's bloody carcass. <laughs> yeah. Then it's just like, oh, okay, <laughs> that tag match was worth. It. I honestly, of everybody in this WrestleMania build and all that, I feel so bad for Seth Rollins. Roman Reigns came out and obliterated that title. Yeah, dude. <laughs> Seth just got. Seth is just like. It's, why are you still out here? <laughs> yeah. I was I leaned over to Jazz. I was like, why is he still here? <laughs> and she's like, bitch, I'm watching TikToks. Why are you still, still here? here? <laughs> I felt so bad for Seth. I was like, wow. I was like, Seth, you really should have just taken this WrestleMania off. You announced you were injured. You should have just called it quits then. <laughs> Dude, like I it, I it is it is I feel worse for him than I do for CM Punk because CM Punk's gonna be able to have his moment. Seth Rollins is gonna be stuck on the mid card again, <laughs> like when he was supposed to main event. <laughs> it's just with l- Punk. lovable loser Seth. Oh my god, I've yeah. never seen such a visceral like, like just a visceral attack on the credibility of a wrestler and their belt ever. Like it felt like it was personal. It felt like he actually pissed off Roman. Yeah, because he, you know what, he should have. He should have been pissed off because what Seth said was just wrong in every single level. It was like, this is a workman's title. Yeah, no one cares. Like, <laughs> sorry. It was like Jesus. Like he's like Roman. Roman's just like, yeah, I'm. I don't need to be here. I, I'm not here, and I'm still bigger than you. And Seth's just like. <laughs> 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 yeah, no, it, it was bad. There, There is a pretty interesting thing. So I had my friend over the other day, and I've been showing them the, like, they're big rock fans. They watch in, like, middle school, high school, big rock fans. So I showed them the clip of rock coming out back as Hollywood rock. Instantly they got it. They're like, oh, my God, this is the rock I remember. I was like, fuck. It really does yeah. work for the casuals. It does, dude. Yeah. I mean, heel, heel rock, I mean, We've been seeing heel rock mm-hmm. since like 2002, yeah. <laughs> 04, 04 when he, when, he, when he first came back. So, I mean, seeing the rock as itself is great, but you, so we've seen the rock of sporadically the past few years. Mm-hmm. It's always been this, this baby face rock cutting the same promo, just amazing because he's still the rock. Yeah. Like rock can cut the same type of promo on a different person mm-hmm. and it works. But heel rock? <laughs> It's pretty awesome. <laughs> Look at that mess, dude. He's fucking huge. <laughs> Although I, I will say I didn't like. He made an Instagram post explaining to what like his movie fans what a heel is. Did he really? <laughs> he did because like he he here's the thing. Yeah. Rock is still a movie star. He still needs to save face. He, he needs to remind people he's playing a character on TV. Which is really which funny is, for a movie star to be saying I'm playing a character. I know, right? Which. Which takes me out of the moment, but at the same time, I get it. He still has a brand to protect. Yeah, multiple brands. You know, like it's it's not good for advertisers. We see he's he's on stage calling a Utah person fat and like bulbous fingers. Yeah, like, he called. He's like, I'll slap the herpes out your face. Yeah, right. It's just like he's like, guys, you and your real. fifty like, wives. Yeah, so so like I I get why he did it, but it's like as a wrestling fan, it's like, ugh, come on, Rob. Yeah, all right. So do you live? The game do you face. think? Do you think, sir, we get uh, Rock Conscious back? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, because yeah. Rock Concert Rock was um, 
Rock Concert Rock was when he was Hollywood Rock. Yeah, and he did it on Vicky last last time. He, last time he did it was on Vicky. My favorite one he did is when he was when he was in Sacramento. Oh, yeah, yeah dude, they, they dis- destroyed Sacramento. <laughs> destroyed Sacramento. It's like it's not my fault. My man Shaq calls y'all the Sacramento Queens <laughs> <laughs> and walked away. So Hollywood Rock, part of the Bloodline. The Bloodline just running rampant on Raw last night too. Really fucked up Cody. Also, honorable mention for player hate of year. Drew McIntyre is on a peel roll. I want the CM Punk WrestleMania graveyard shirt. I do too. That was because <laughs> well, you know. Well, so the story was uh, how you know how he stormed out of Survivor Series. Yeah, which I thought was all part of the show. Well, that. Well, no, he had to, he had to get out of the way because Punk was coming no, back. Seth. So Seth was part of the show. Yeah. Drew was not, and because Drew was supposed to main event, well, not main event, but have the time match with Seth at Mania. Oh. Right, that was the plan going into November, and then Punk came back and took his spot. So he was legitimately mad. He also right? also had to get out of the way for when Punk was going to come back. Sure, <laughs> and then they turned it into a storyline with the, the promos because Drew's still professional. Yeah, and now that he's hurt, Drew slid back into that slot, and he's just trolling. <laughs> it's so, a great yeah. shirt. It's like yeah, so that was that was actually legitimately real because he was supposed to be in the title picture to begin with. Listen, it makes sense. I I saw I saw the lobbied for because I thought Gunther had a great had a great option. You could have done Gunther Seth, title for title. Get the IC the main event for the first time in a very long time. I mean, it would would have been cool. It would have had you know Hogan Warrior vibes. That's what I'm going um, for, yeah. But it's gonna combine two mid mid two mid workman <laughs> titles into one. Well, he can he like, can claim himself he's the better workhorse than Seth, which he but is. Then what do you do with? But what do you do with both belts? He can say, since I, like the Gunther character is snobby, I'll be like, there's no one who can beat me. He just drops it and gives it off to somebody else because now he's a world champion. See, but so I, I, I get that, and it would be a cool moment for Gunther and like a WrestleMania moment. But then you you don't bury Gunther's title reign, but you don't carry that momentum that gets carried with that win over Gunther. This gets dropped instead. Mm-hmm. Does it get does it get transferred to that new person? Like Jim, Jay Uso would have been a perfect person to win this belt, um, because that momentum would have transferred over to him and elevated both him and the title and Gunther. Yeah. Whereas this winning the belt and then dropping the next night because you don't need to, it just no one looks good from doing that. Understandable. Including the belt. Including the belt. Yeah. As cool of a moment it would be for WrestleMania, and us marks would lose our mind and the match would be out of this world. Yeah. This this doesn't make sense. Yeah, it, it it happened. So we we'll we'll see. What, I'm I'm very scared to see what Gunther's gonna do. Like I don't know who he faces or anything. But also, guys, we're living through history. Do we, do we just forget that? Like I don't know why people are so excited for Gunther to drop the title. It's like, dude, you're gonna be telling your kids about this title reign. Yeah. Right. Yeah, like you don't want this to end. Like hi, I have a listen to a wrestling fan. They go, oh, Bruno had the best run. And you kind of go, well, yeah. Well, Twenty <laughs> years from now, that's going to be us. Gunther had the best run. <laughs> this this flippy McDippy guy can suck my cock, <laughs> right? So I don't want him to drop ever. I want him to be had this IC title for three more years, so I can say I witnessed the greatest history in wrestling. He is at whatever title he holds, whether it's IC or World, he's going into Berlin as a champion. Yeah. <laughs> in <laughs> fact, he's probably going to, dr- dude. He's probably going to drop in Berlin because this that no, be a- you you you. You love you love your curse, but then again, he's a he's gonna be a big baby face. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah, it is it is gonna be crazy. So WrestleMania is finally taking place, taking uh, shape, you know, um, with uh, with all these matches and subtle and hands up matches can't coming wait up. For Uso Red versus Uso Blue. <laughs> Dude, one of them's got to come out as Charizard. The other one's got to come out as Blastoise. Because that's literally what it's gonna I be. Was thinking, it's red versus blue. I was thinking red versus blue, like the Halo characters, the Halo show. Oh, that'd be pretty cool yeah. too. That would that'd work that too. That would be amazing. So, also something going up in Master Chief. Oh, Master the, Chief. The, the title, the title for Master Chief, Chief yes. dude. <laughs> Head of the table and the Master Head Chief. Of the table and the Master Chief. So, the other big thing that WWE announced <laughs> uh, this uh, this week, uh, starting on SmackDown and on Raw, with a press release coming out uh, Monday night as well, is WWE World at WrestleMania sponsor uh, a Fanatics events experience uh, is this this access it looks like it's going to be a rebranded access so let me read to you the press release uh, i have it right here next to me um and it goes a little something like this wwe and fanatics events because they just outsource the fanatics now and i don't blame them um 
have officially announced details for WWE World at WrestleMania. Five days, pretty much the entire five days that we're going to be there, Will. Interactive fan yep. experience taking place from Thursday, April 4th to Monday, uh, April 8th at the Pennsylvania Con- Convention Center in Philly, right across the street from us, or right down the road from us, actually. Uh, tickets will be available starting this Thursday, uh, February 22nd at 10 a.m. You want to know what the ticket range is? God, probably like 20 to 400 dollars. Close, 30 to 300. God damn it. <laughs> they hoping to pay 20. <laughs> They, they say WWE World of WrestleMania will feature a variety of immersive experiences for fans, including a central main stage, which will host a WWE roundtable discussion. Interesting. Um, a WWE 2K24 gaming tournament. Very interested in that. I'm going to get my ass whooped <laughs> if I ever played that. Uh, live podcast recordings. What podcast? I want to know about it. Dude, Sam's podcast, please. <laughs> I am Sam with uh, fucking <laughs> what's his name? <laughs> Sam uh, the ball guy. Sam Roberts. Sam Roberts. Yeah. yeah, I am Sam with Sam Roberts. Uh, they're also going to have live memorabilia and autograph sales through Fanatics Live, uh, which Fanatics Live does like they do live auctioning on uh, streams all yep. the time. Uh, and the end. All right, this kind of scares me because I don't know if I have enough money for this. They are claiming they're going to have the largest. WWE Superstore in WrestleMania history. Sweet Jesus. <laughs> yeah. The, the event will also feature um, exclusive merchandise, autograph sessions, and meet and greets with WWE superstars and legends, in addition to immersive exhibits and memorabilia honoring WrestleMania's 40-year uh, history. So this is, to me, this is Access. Uh, rebranded. Yeah. For like the um team time. So the last time uh, I was at Access or what or whatever they're gonna call it that year in in Dallas uh, for thirty eight, it was like you paid like ten dollars for an all week pass, and then you paid extra for like these little immersive experiences and uh, the store and all of that and all of the other random shit. But now they're saying they're gonna be ticket packages between thirty dollars and three hundred dollars. And they don't tell don't tell you what that money goes to. So we're gonna do our best today to figure out what do you get for thirty, and what might you get for something a little bit higher. Thirty is just GA. That's just that's all it is. It's general admission. You get to walk in the doors and look around. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm assuming everything else you have to pay for, pretty much. Yeah. Um, Three hundred dollars. We'll get you access like the round table, right? Just access to events. Uh, you sk- probably skip lines. Fast pass it. Uh, you probably, honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if you can get in an hour early. That'd be dope. So the $30, it's like say it opens at 10 a.m. Mm-hmm. You get open at 9. You you get in at 9 and P- GA probably opens up at like 11, right? Maybe. It's probably like a, you know, something like that. They did, You just get extra things, skip lines, and access to special events. <laughs> $300. Fred says $30 Rinku, $300 NXT contract. <laughs> I mean, that too. <laughs> That's pretty good. That's pretty good. I, I'm assuming you do uh, You do 30, like GA, I think sounds good. Like 300. Like, I wonder what the tiers are. So, like, does, yeah. like, does 300 get you, like, guaranteed meet and greets? Like, you don't pay extra for the meet and greets? And you, Probably. like, you know, you guaranteed you know, autographs you know, I would and shit? Be surpri- I wouldn't be surprised if... Like there's tiered meet and greets, mm. like tier ones, like Taker, um, Seth Rollins, like Becky Lynch, yeah. that kind of tier. Tier two is like your Gunthers, your uh, your New Days, not New Days, your your Usos, mm-hmm. um, whatever. Some legends like Steamboat, whatever. And then tier three is just everyone else. Yeah. If you get a three hundred dollar ticket, you get access to a tier one and tier two. You just have to pick it. You just have to choose. Gotcha. Right? Yeah. For free. For free. Then anything else you can pay for. That's probably, that's what I would do. Yeah. I'm just hoping they do, like, you know, the general mission for, like, for the whole weekend. Because I thought that yes. worked perfectly. Uh, well, that's, that's, honestly, it's probably $30 a day. I really hope not. Um, But we'll, I mean, we'll, we're going to find out in two days. <laughs> I mean, I would totally be, I'd, I'd totally would be, oh, but by the time this, is, this episode is released, it'll be public. Yeah. Um, I'm totally down to, like, do a mid-tier package. Yeah. If it's if it's worth it, 
Yeah, I, I need more. I need more details on the packages and what we what we get with that because I, I'd, I'd be down for that as well. And like also, uh, I looked it up and I know we we talked about it a couple days ago. WrestleCon's a fifteen minute walk from where we're staying. WrestleCon's fun. Yeah, honestly, I like I like walking around and talking to people and shaking hand wrestlers' hands more than like paying for a selfie. <laughs> yeah. Rick Flair uh, just paying, got announced, pay, by the way. Paying, paying, uh, Rick Flair got announced, of course. Yeah. Dude. Paying extra for a picture is just annoying. It just, I just, I think, I get it, but I don't like it. <laughs> so I'm fine just walk around saying hi and shaking hands. Yeah. And I also found out, we'll talk about a lot more when we Except get Except the it. Sandman. He put me in, he put me in the, uh, the he choked me with the cane, which is totally He also got it. choked by Sergeant Slaughter. <laughs> Yeah, I just slot to put me in the Cobra Clutch, which is also super worth it. It's like, if, you, if you're going to do shit like that, yeah, I'll pay you for that. <laughs> yeah, no. Uh, I also found out WrestleCons has a 2300 arena for the weekend. Is that, the ECW uh, arena. ECW arena? Yeah, That's pretty they cool. got the ECW That's arena pretty. for the weekend. Uh, which is pretty crazy. So WWE World uh, at Fanatics, it's going to be an interesting time. Uh, we'll see what the ticket packages are. We're probably going to be there. I know we're going to be there. Um, and it's going to I'm, I'm, I'm excited for it. I'm very scared about how big this store is going to be, because that's where I spend the most time <laughs> in is the store and looking yeah, around. I'm pretty, good at, I'm pretty good at not buying merch like that, though. I'll buy the skull because I always buy the skull. I buy the skulls as well. Uh, and I'll probably buy like the penny flag because who doesn't like a good pennant? There you go. The penny flag is good. Yeah. I, for, but shirts, I don't buy shirts. I don't buy t-shirts ever. Yeah. My, my big thing, I always have to buy the skull. It's like a, for whenever I go to WrestleMania, it's a skull, a uh, commemorative cup. Yeah. Obviously. Um, clear bag. Yep. Um, if my Connors Cures bracelet doesn't, doesn't screw, doesn't like break, I'll buy a Connors Cure bracelet. Like if I, yep. my Connors Cure bracelet's, uh, breaks i'll buy another one who's that dude who does the doodles the artwork oh uh, shamberger rob shamberger yeah if, he's if, amazing if i'm if i'm feeling crazy <laughs> i might i might buy one of those i don't have any more space for like i already have i'm looking at it right now oh i do i have, I have, I have plenty of wall space. i have 10 on the wall right now dude did I, did I show you my staff of gandalf i have over here i feel like you have <laughs> oh dude <laughs> Dude, it's like a, it's like a legitimate life size replica. It's like an actual staff. It almost goes above my head. Yeah, no. But uh, I had it mounted on the wall and it fell off last week. <laughs> yeah, no, Sham. So now I just have it leaning in the corner. Yeah. It's a bummer. No, Shamberg is great. Like, I I like I actually like being at the Shamberger booth because he's usually just not. He's usually just painting. <laughs> yeah, he's just he's just, he's just hanging out. And his wife runs the stand, and she's really freaking nice. So yeah, no W World. I'm really excited for. Uh, before we get to WrestleMania and all of that, we still have one last stop, and that is the Elimination Chamber from Perth, Australia. It is going to be about six, seven p.m. when the show starts for them at local Australian time. For us on the East Coast, the event starts at five a.m., which means on the West Coast, it starts at. 2 a.m. <laughs> okay. So, the only like the one time I'm like maybe I'm I the one time I was like maybe I should live on the like I can do a 2 a.m. show. 5 a.m. is going to be a little bit rough for me. No, dude. That means it's going to end at five. I'd rather I'd rather be up at five and have it end at eight. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, true. dude. I'm in a, I'm in a real conundrum because Saturday morning um, is is Bill Maher time. I always watch Bill Maher first thing on Saturday morning. At 5 a.m. on Saturday morning. <laughs> No, no, he no. Like when I wake up in the morning, like 10 a.m. Okay. So uh, we call him Grandpa because <laughs> he Bill Mars is such a fucking grandpa. It's hilarious. So I don't know what I'm gonna do. In the matter, it's mad. We might have. What do I watch first? Do I watch Bill Maher first or throw an elimination chamber first? I don't know. It, it's gonna be. I'm gonna wake up Saturday morning. Maybe, maybe I'll do a Saturday afternoon because I like to, I like to do yeah. like I like, I like to order pizza or wings or whatever when I when I do these WWE shows. Yeah. Maybe I'll do Saturday afternoon, one o'clock. Stay off Twitter. Stay off Instagram. Mm-hmm. And just put it on at one o'clock. That, that's that sounds fair. I mean, I I think I'm probably gonna gonna take the challenge. I I thought about this. I was like, there are people in other countries like Europe, England, uh, like the UK, uh, yeah, that do this yeah, do it all the time. All the time. They do it for wrong. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and I was like, I I can't feel that highly of myself to not give this a try once and suffer for this one time. Um. They're also doing a press conference Thursday night at 11 p.m. Eastern because it'll be like afternoon there <laughs> the next day. So it's going to be a lot of interesting late night programming for WWE or early morning programming uh, over the weekend. So Elimination Chamber is uh, it's pretty much, I think, four matches on the card. Uh, just to give you guys a quick update, 
on where we are. We did a prediction, myself, Will, and Kay, last time we were all for Rumble of Royalties. Uh, we, I didn't know these are real predictions, by the way, so <laughs> don't judge mine. Well, I'm right now, overall, I am up by one. That's because I picked Bully Ray to come up with the <laughs> if, I knew, if I knew we were doing actual predictions, I would not have done Bully yeah, Ray. Yeah, <laughs> you and we pretty much happened was we all tied in our predictions for the actual matches. We all got CM Punk as the <laughs> as the winner, and we all got it wrong. We got everybody else right. But it was all about the surprise entrance. Yeah. So, yeah, I got two surprise entrants correct. Um, I, don't think I, got, I don't think I got any. Yeah, you did. You got Andrade. Ah. Yeah. You, got, cool. you got Andrade. <laughs> so I'm up five. I'm up by one. I have five. The uh, Everybody else is four. So we're going to continue this prediction battle going into Elimination Chamber. We're going to start with the Men's Elimination Chamber, which I will admit is fucking stacked. You have Drew McIntyre, Randy Orton, Bobby Lashley, Kevin Owens, LA Knight, yeah, and yeah. Logan Paul, who probably has a death wish being with all these guys in the ring right now. Um, this is going to be brutal. Obviously, the winner of this gets to challenge Seth for the World Heavyweight uh, Championship hmm. at WrestleMania. Uh, Kayfabe, who is not with us on the show, has already made their predictions uh, for this. Mm. Kay has chosen that the winner of the match they predict will be Drew McIntyre. Uh, there are some bonus questions here as well. Kay believes the first person eliminated in the men's elimination chamber will be Kevin Owens, and the final two members of the men's elimination chamber will be Drew McIntyre and Randy Orton. So, will I leave it to you? What are your what are your choices for this, sir? Hmm. Let's see. This is for the Raw belt. <laughs> You're not even calling it the World <laughs> Heavyweight Title. <laughs> Kevin Owens, SmackDown. Hmm. Bobby Lashley, SmackDown. Okay. Randy Orton, also SmackDown. <laughs> Logan Paul, oh wait, also SmackDown. <laughs> LA Knight, SmackDown. I don't know, Ricky. Who's, who's going to go for the <laughs> Raw belt on this one? Maybe the Raw superstar, Drew McIntyre. <laughs> Just a hunch. <laughs> I think Drew's going to win this one. <laughs> What a fully fucking stupid here! Come on, now. this is ridiculous. There's going to be a lot of things set up in this match, though. I think we're getting. I think we do set up L.A. Knight Logan Paul. Uh, for I Mania. hope so. Yeah, because I know we do KO Logan Paul left room on the table, but I, I want Logan Paul L.A. Knight. Although I will say Kevin Owens is probably a little more blockbuster than L.A. Knight. A little bit. I mean, we got to get a, the KO Mania shirts like sell like hotcakes every year. I mean, you could you <laughs> could do a triple threat too, which I don't, which I would not be mm -hmm. mad at, because that means uh, Logan Paul can keep the belt, which would also be really fun. <laughs> but L, I think LA Knight should get that belt, and I think it should be one on one because I think he's done so much good work over the past year. Oh yeah, you got to award him with something. Mm -hmm. and it's it's like it's got to be backstage politics for the reason he's not getting. Like a one-on-one. -on -one. If he does, if he doesn't get it. It's, it's got to be backstage politics at this point. Maybe at some point. So, who is the first person eliminated from this for you, Will? Damn, that's a tough one, man. Um, I think they do. This, I think Bobby Lashley comes in early, and they do a spot where like four guys team up on him and they get him out first. Wow. Okay. Because Bobby Lashley looks like looks like the tank. Mm -hmm. Um, unless unless they do like a, a, a Kevin Owens screwy thing with Logan Paul. Which would be really funny, but I think Logan Paul comes in last because he's a celebrity. Yeah. And I think I should be eliminated by then. Okay. Because they're gonna do they're gonna do a spot where they all circle Logan Paul in, in the pod when he comes out last, and it's gonna be great. He's got to get his licks in. Yeah. <laughs> so I think Bobby Lashley gets eliminated first, and they, they surprise you. All right. So Wade in our chat here is saying LA Knight's gonna win, um, but he thinks KO gets out first. So he says, all right. So who are the final two? So you're picking Drew. Drew's in your final two. Who's the upper person that Drew goes up against? I also got uh, Randy Drew. I do like Drew and Randy as the last two. Drew and Randy is, is a really good one. Oh, I just figured it out, I think. Oh, my God, I'm typing this in so I don't have to fucking do it later. Um, I think Logan Paul takes a mean RKO. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Somehow into a stunner. <laughs> <laughs> like I feel like he's going to get Claymore kicked, stunned, and RKO'd in the same moment. Oh, that was my spot for Bobby, though. Maybe I don't know. I I just I honestly for some reason I still don't, I don't see Bobby even like Bobby might even might not even make it into the chamber because he's got that beef with uh, 
Paul Ellering and the and the Legion of Dead People. Um, not the Legion of Dead People. Uh, oh yeah, I already forgot that happened. Yeah. Um, with Carrie, oh, yeah. Logan goes for a buckshot and gets Claymore. Actually, yes, yeah, I want to do that. <laughs> I would, That'd be pretty cool. <laughs> that would be absolutely amazing right, for me. Uh, I mean, it does. I would love to see Seth and Randy again, just because we saw it at Mania like years ago with the greatest RKO of all time. Remember that the uh, in thirty one. Oh yeah, yeah. That the going for the stomp. Yeah, <laughs> he lifted it up for the stomp. Um, but the you're right. The story here is Drew McIntyre. Um, Drew has slipped his way back into a main event. He'll finally get a proper main event with Seth Rollins, which will be a massive toss up for who wins that. So I, I am gonna go with Drew uh, as well. First person to get knocked out of the of the match. Ooh, let's see. I'm looking at this. Because you want to kind of create a shock factor. What if, like, I'm going to go for a wild card, wild card here. I think LA Knight gets eliminated first. That'd be a real bummer. But <laughs> people people would be very mad. Gets, but that's how you give him heat. He gets eliminated. They go, LA Knight. No. <laughs> <laughs> he gets eliminated by Logan Paul. God, that would be good heat. Yeah. That's not a, not a bad. I thought about doing that. I thought about taking that pick. I thought about going that way. Yeah, I think you, you know if L- if Pat Harrison were alive, I would have done it. But he's <laughs> yeah. not. If LA if <laughs> LA Knight's road is set, if they finally like hammer that in, if LA Knight's road is set already, and he is going to get that mania like a night one opener or a night two opener, get him out first and get the person he's going to face to eliminate him, which I still think should be the Logan Paul. The final two, uh, it's going to be Drew and. I don't want to say Drew and Randy, but Randy makes all the sense in the world. Um, ooh, I think Drew and Logan be really. I think I, I'm going to go Drew and Logan. I think they're going to like. I think they might they might hype it up like Logan just gets really lucky a lot of the time in the match, and then Drew just beats him down at the end. Something like that. Um, yeah, because I can't see Kevin staying for that long. Uh, I can't see LA Knight staying for that long. It's between like Drew and Randy or Drew and Logan. But just for just for sake, I'm gonna say Drew and Logan are the final two. It's a bold prediction. It's a very bold prediction. It's probably an incorrect prediction. I'll tell you that right now. But a bold one nonetheless. At least he didn't pick Bully Ray, all right. <laughs> it was an idea. It was an idea. All right, moving on. Uh the women's elimination chamber match, which is actually a very intriguing one because like all but like all but like two of these women have actually been in the chamber before becky lynch first time in the chamber bianca belair won a chamber match tiffany stratton the next big thing in the women's division in wwe she's freaking amazing uh literally you get called up in like two you get called up like two weeks ago and now you're in the chamber that's a lot of that's a lot of faith in somebody uh, off the jump, uh, Naomi Raquel Rodriguez finally back from injury, and uh, Liv Morgan has was the only other woman I think in here in the chamber. The winner of this match obviously goes up against Mommy or whoever the women's world heavyweight champion is at the end of the chamber. So, well, back to you. Who wins this whole thing? Uh, well, if you watch the press conference, they made it blatantly obvious <laughs> to be Becky Lynch. Yeah, with that incredible stare down they had. <laughs> And the promos, and they did do, they do, they did do the uh, words. Yeah. Did they do a pull apart? They did not do. It was just a stare down. It was a not down? a pull apart. No. No, I then uh, Pierce came out and they split them, split them apart. Yeah, but it wasn't like apart, it wasn't like a. Yeah, it wasn't. It wasn't a pull yeah. apart. Yeah. So yeah, this this is this is the match. Like, uh, Rhea Ripley hasn't had any credible challengers in a year. Like really, she's had matches, she's defended, but no one like no builds really. Not much of a storyline. Nia Jax is gonna be a good match. Um, and I'm glad she's getting that spotlight, but we've just been waiting to do Becky and Rhea for the longest time. Mm-hmm. And Bianca and Rhea have like Randy Orton and Cena matches ahead of them. <laughs> Are you going to have enough of them? So it's, it's time for Becky Lynch and they're going to put on a hell of a show of WrestleMania. I'm surprised this is Becky's first chamber. I kind of am too, to be honest with you, because I thought she had done one before, but she's never done one. I think every other one of the four horsewomen have done them, except for Becky, and I don't know why that is. Um, but also, 
the match at Mania writes itself. Mommy versus the man. That's a that's a that's yeah. a t-shirt. That that's yeah. an event t-shirt right there. <laughs> it is. It's great. Yeah. Mommy versus man, WrestleMania. It, it writes the itself. The sex jokes, the sex jokes just write themselves. Listen, Becky called Becky called Rhea a bottom <laughs> during a the press bottom. conference. Yeah, I yeah. And she, <laughs> she's but yeah, she just went a power bomb. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'm gonna go. <laughs> That's what you should have said. <laughs> I'm gonna go with uh, I'm gonna go with Becky as well because uh, it's very undeniable uh, that you know that Becky's got to be the front runner. My second chance, my second guess would have been Bianca because, like you said, Bianca and Rhea they can run that match for, for forever and ever. But you don't need. I think Bianca's onto something bigger uh, or something more like highlight worthy. Like I feel, I know Bianca's gonna get a spotlight match at Mania. Because they'd be stupid not to give her a spotlight match, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know. Against who it's who it's gonna be will be uh, very yeah, interesting. Probably Jade. I hope so. After that Rumble, Bianca and Jade. After that Rumble yeah, I performance, mean, I was like, "Give it to me now." It's gonna be Bianca and Jade, or it's gonna be Nia and Jade. The question is, do you want Jade to win? Um, if you want her to win, you put up against Nia. If, if you don't, if you don't mind she, her losing and looking good, you put up against Bianca. If she goes against Bianca, Bianca wins. Yeah. Is Jade still green? Yeah, but like, oof, that'd be the shock of the century if she beat Bianca. Like, that's that's a great upset story. Mm. <laughs> it's a great upset story. Wade's, Wade says Jade ends Bianca's streak. It could be. All right, so same same question as before. Who's the first person eliminated from this match? Oh, man. Um, why Raquel? Yeah, she was the last chance qualifier. Yeah. Uh, so she she won a pretty she won she won a or run. or Tiffany Stratton. I think they keep Tiffany for a while. Tiffany's got crazy yeah, athleticism. She's new. I, I they're gonna keep Tiffy because she had a she had a crazy match with Becky in NXT. We had they did a crazy couple of matches. They did they did a great job together working. So I think they 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 continue that. Um I, yeah, I think the odd person out is Raquel. I don't know how she how she gets out is gonna be gonna be interesting, but I think Raquel gets knocked out first. Yeah, I do too. I'm glad Naomi's back. Oh, that was like the best part of the Rumble for me. Her entrance. Yeah, you know when Naomi really came bad. back at the Rumble, when like the lights went out and the strobe lights, I was like, oh my god, Dave's probably losing his mind right now. Oh, you know god, how much you love Naomi. Naomi. I forgot <laughs> how much he loved Naomi. Oh my god, that, that just core memory unlocked. He loved. All right, before, as I write this up, we all picked Raquel, by the way. Also, kayfabe also picked Becky to win. Um, we were in Orlando for Mania Thirty Three, which was supposed to be Taker's retirement match, which did not happen. Um, and you know how at accesses at accesses in the past they have like the one of one stuff. That are signed by the performers. Yeah. Yeah. Dave bought a giant one, giant like Naomi one of one picture. <laughs> <On t- laughs> of course he did. On top of all, I remember us leaving with like trash bags of merchandise as we were young and just had money to blow. <laughs> wasn't Dave dating that black chick at the time? No, he wasn't. It was after. It was after it that? It was after, yeah. God. <laughs> I gotta reach out to Dave again. If he's at Mania, I want to see him. <laughs> <laughs> that would be amazing. <laughs> I actually, I actually, because of, of nine years, I made, I made a LinkedIn post about Dave. I was like, it's time one of my unsung heroes gets his song. <laughs> I, I just wrote a song for Dave. It was a, oh. <laughs> shout out to Dave. I miss Dave. Shout out to Dave. That'd be great. Um, all right. So, with Becky probably being the winner, who faces Becky in as the final two? Oh man, probably Liv Morgan. I was like, Becky and Bianca would be a great one and two. Becky and Bianca is—it's too obvious though. Yeah, you you need a surprise. I'm gonna go Liv Morgan because people love Liv Morgan still <laughs> for whatever reason. <laughs> listen, I saw. Listen, I saw the mugshot. I'd love her too. I mean, she had a great mugshot. <laughs> yeah, that mugshot was fantastic. Uh, I don't think it's Liv. I'm again gonna go for a wild card. So you said Becky and Liv. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Kayfabe said Becky and Bianca. I'm going to go Becky and Tiffy. Just because I've seen them work together. 
So I'm going to go with the shock factor there. Okay. Yeah. Becky and Tiffy. You said Becky and who? Oh, Liv. Um, Liv. Yeah, you only live once, right? Uh, so there's that match. Uh, next, there's only like four matches on this card, by the way. Uh, probably for good reason, because we're all watching it at 5 a.m. <laughs> Got to get in and out. And who knows what they're probably going to put on last minute and all that. What I actually think is going to be the main event, and rightfully so, Rhea Ripley is going to defend the Women's World title against Nia Jax, and I think they're giving her the main. I think she gets the main event spot. Oh, you know what? So, like, I looked, probably... I looked online when I was looking at the match card, and Rhea and Nia are the first, are, is the number one spot. And then everything after that. Yeah, I think that's fine. I think it makes sense. Like, I mean, she 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 came out on Raw or not on she was in like a little backstage interview saying that she hasn't wrestled in her own country in seven years, and that's when she was on the indies. Yeah. And like she's from what I recall, and just look, knowing the brief history though, I don't I don't really don't think they've ever had like an Aussie world champion outside of Rhea. Of anybody of like Australian descent. Uh, Mel Gibson. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Um, so I think it makes sense that she made events this night. Like, no, like it works because like she is the she's the attraction. She's the only oh, like they didn't get Bronson Reed in the chamber, which I thought was a weird. Yeah, really weird. Yeah, I thought like you shove as many Aussies as you can on the show. He's the only one. He's the only active Hell, one. Hell, bring the Iconics back. Who gives a shit? I don't know if they're, because I know they both just had children. So I don't know if they're even like ring ready. I thought about that too. I was like, if the Iconics show up, that'd be absolutely amazing. Oh. Um, yeah. <laughs> they would be really fun. Doing what? I don't know, man. Those tag titles are useless. Just be, just have them be them. Because, like, I always thought the Iconics were stupidly entertaining for no reason. They're like... Uh, they were stupid, all right. <laughs> they, Billy Kay is handing out resumes. Billy, <laughs> right, Billy Kay's single run was fantastic. When she just joined every faction. Yeah, I mean, if Bronson's... <laughs> I'm just reading the chat. If Bronson's wife wants to pop, yeah, that makes sense. Oh, like, that's oh, that's what it is? Yeah. If oh, it's, it's, okay. It's, especially if it's, if it's his first child. Mm, yeah, like, yeah, that makes sense. I'd be like, yeah, I'd be like, hey, I'd be like, hey, hey, H, hey, Paul. Let me, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me, my child, but born. <laughs> yeah. And he's just like, okay. I mean, that's the reason Gunther disappeared for like two weeks. He got married. Well, no, no. And he had a, and kid. He had a kid. Yeah. And, and then later on, he had the kid. Yeah. yeah he had a kid later he had on. He kid later on. Yeah. Um, so that, I'm glad WWE has parental leave. Yeah. You know, that's nice <laughs> it's, that's it's nice very of them. kind of them to <laughs> do. <laughs> Gotta love those new age policies. Um, so yeah, it's good. For them. No, I think, Rhea, I think Rhea's going to get a, a crazy pop. She's gonna lose. To, she's gonna not lose. She's gonna beat Nia. I think that's clearly obvious. She's gonna beat Nia. Um, uh huh. But I really hope that the the inevitability of this match doesn't overshadow the performance. I think Nia is, is going to be able to give because like they've been building Nia really well ever since she came back. Her. her I agree. Yeah. I saw a po- I saw a post the other day of like Nia is just not giving it. Like she's just. She, they called her the Braun Strowman of the women's division, where she's like not even trying. And I was like, "What? Are you sure? What are you, what are you watching? <laughs> like you're watching the same thing?" <laughs> so I didn't watch. I didn't watch Raw last week, but the Raw the week before. Yeah. Um, when she was just like get that fake crying, mm-hmm. I was like, she was just bad at it. <laughs> like, she wasn't yeah. good at it. it wasn't like she wasn't trying, or she wasn't playing the character, but she is wasn't wasn't believable. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I know what you're doing here, not. <laughs> but I think her run's been very good. She did great in the Rumble. She put. In, should we put uh Jade over? What's her name? Jade over crazy. Yeah. Like her and Becky had this feud's been good. Her promos are good. Her matches are fine. She beat Becky, which is surprising. Yeah. So I thought I think this is the best she's ever been by far. Yeah, she's 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 a better she's better at soaking up soaking up the crowd as a heel. Like remember when she yes. got the baby face run after she beat Alexa Bliss, which is a great story. Like that story yeah. they did was fantastic. She just she floundered as a as a face. Yeah. Real badly. She's very comfortable. She looks very comfortable on screen night. She does. She does. And I, I, I wish her all the best. I love that they gave her the bonsai drop and called to be annihilated. I was like, this is perfect. Yeah, it's great. <laughs> all, everything about it is good. This is absolutely perfect. And uh, I think Rhea respects her enough that they're going to put on a fun match. Like a really, really fun match. It's going to be a main event worthy match, which I believe will be Nia's first PLE main event. 
and definitely it Rios. Would be. Yeah, it would be. So I, I'm I'm it very excited be. for this, but I think LOL Rio wins. Like I think it's it's very very easy to call that Rio's going to win this, and rightfully so. However, like you said earlier, this is Rio's technically Rio's hometown. But I do not think WWE is that batshit insane. The only way <laughs> Rhea Ripley loses this belt is if Damian Priest cashes in on her. <laughs> <laughs> that is the only way she would lose this belt. And he goes, it's my yard now. <laughs> and he just holds up her belt. And then, and then the Damian Priest like dancing thing he used to yeah. do. <laughs> <laughs> Can you the flailing? Can you imagine that? He's like six eight. Can you imagine that guy like moshing at a concert? No, <laughs> <laughs> no. I I'd be I'd leave. It's so dangerous. <laughs> I would find the nearest country music star <laughs> and just go to their concert instead and be like, "Wow, this is way better." Oh, you mean Beyonce? <laughs> Yes, Beyonce. <laughs> I, okay, okay. Can we talk about the uh, in the post show that Beyonce like that Oklahoma radio station that refused to play her? No, they didn't know. We'll talk, we'll talk about the post okay. show because this is a misunderstanding. <laughs> oh my God, Beyonce dominating country music to to the smart. Yeah. Which, no, what she's doing is very smart, and her actually reasoning for doing the album, I think, is actually very, very, very smart and intelligent and good marketing. Yeah, yeah. So, but post show, we'll talk. Super about Bowl it. commercial was fantastic. She's like, oh, you broke the internet again. Oh, watch what I do next. God damn it, Beyonce. <laughs> yeah, for real. And her movie was great. <laughs> <laughs> God damn, but yeah. LOL Rio wins. Uh, a much deserved main event for her. It's going to be a pretty awesome time. Whether she's probably going to get some crazy pyro. That's an open air stadium too. That pyro is going to be nuts yeah. for her, uh, and I can't wait for that. Uh, last but not least, a surprising yet very exciting uh, tag team championship match. You're going to have Judgment Day, uh, Priest, and and Balor versus. Essentially British British strong style. They just haven't called him that yet. Uh Tyler Bate and yes, will Pete Dunn <laughs> to go up for the tag titles. I know. I know. It was about time. <laughs> I love how I love how Michael Cole called, still called him Butch on Raw the next week. Did he really? <laughs> He's like on this SmackDown, it's gonna be Butch and, and Tyler Bate versus DIY. And and uh, I think it was uh my, uh uh, McAfee goes, he goes by Pete Dunn now. Got his name back, Cole. <laughs> 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 so Fretz, Fretz Romania in our chat is reporting that New Catch Republic is the tag team name, apparently, which I yuck. I like it a little too long. NCR was this <laughs> follow, follow New Vegas, the NCR, <laughs> New California Republic. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I like it because I guess I don't want to be British Strong Style without Trent. Um, New Catch Republic, I guess. Cool, but they're not really catches catch can get it catches catch can wrestling ah uh, yeah uh, that i think that's what it comes from uh they should just call them the grizzled young because <laughs> <laughs> w- I mean, wwe dude, owns they're, the name so they can just i mean, I mean <laughs> and honestly dude they're both like 28 years old but they're veterans yeah. they've been in this company forever <laughs> And they're both jaded about it, so they're grizzled about it. They're both <laughs> grizzled, grizzled young, young veterans. veterans. The name makes way more sense. <laughs> That's amazing, absolutely amazing. Um, that would be fa- that would be absolutely freaking fantastic. Uh, kayfabe selecting, which is pretty, which is pretty obvious. Pete Dunne and Tyler Bate winning this. I kind of want. I kind of think if there is a title change on this in this. Uh, card it's gonna be this one um and i think because of the trend of what they've been doing with our troop and making him like the hottest guy in wrestling next to cody rhodes <laughs> like um it is really funny our truth our truth is this honor dude <laughs> <laughs> dude so they did a dominic mysterio <laughs> they did an eight-man tag okay they did an eight man tag um, of Awesome Truth and DIY, which R Truth calls DX. Okay. <laughs> I know he calls it DX. Versus, versus the actual <laughs> members of Judgment Day. When R Truth got the hot tag, the place exploded. He did the five moves of Doom and they acted like it was John Cena. <laughs> <laughs> so funny, dude. I don't know. I don't know how he does it, but did you see what they did uh, with our troop last night or on Monday? No. So they had Jackie Redman 
uh they did like a they did like a 2020 like video special on him <laughs> with like dramatic music in the background <laughs> Like when he did his like his like his judgment day orgy yeah. a few weeks ago. So then they had R2 and Jackie Redman like walking down the street like like a 2020 interview. <laughs> and he's like he's R2 is just rifting right now. And then he goes, This must feel I guess this must have been what it felt like when Genuine made the song Pony. <laughs> in the middle of the, in the middle of the interview. <laughs> I wanna know who his age is. <laughs> And oh my god! So I think this is all trend because they keep beating the crap out of Archie. Um, I don't know how he keeps on getting as hot as a baby face. He's like older than everybody in WWE. Um, so I, here's what I think, and this is going to be my bonus question and my selection. I'm going to go with kayfabe here. Um, I think Archie interferes and costs them the title, and I think you get a, like I think Bait and Dunn holding those titles can do much more than what the Judgment Day has done with those titles. Because I think you want to start to create a rift in the Judgment Day, and they got to get some of those titles off of their hands. And I think Baden, I think Tyler Bate and Pete Dunn do more with those titles. And you also have Archie, you know, interfering and costing them the costing them the win. It's I think it's very possible. Yeah, I, I think it's very very possible, especially because Finn's deal expires like right after or shortly after Mania. Oh yeah. And and Damian has that Money in the Bank briefcase, so. You need to get these titles off of them sooner rather than later. I, I assume Finn's re-signing. Not a doubt about it in my mind. Yeah. Uh, but Damien still has that briefcase, and he needs to cash it in. He needs to do soon. something with that shit. Yeah. <laughs> so if there is time to do it, now is probably a time. That being said, I'm going to hold off. I think Priest and Finn retain. You think they drop at a bigger moment like, you know, WrestleMania? They probably they probably drop it at Mania, yeah. Okay, so so Priest and Finn retain. Okay. Does R Truth uh, get involved? Yes. All right. That is literally all the matches on the card for Judgment Day. Uh, not for Judgment Day, probably for Elimination Chamber. They have Judgment Day colors. Uh for for his PLE, but the other thing that's happening, uh, the other Aussie that's going to be highlighted, they have the Grayson Waller effect. It's essentially, the Australian Roddy Piper, and he's going to have Cody and Seth on the Grayson Waller effect show uh, at Elimination Chamber. So, big question is, what the hell happens here? Does anything actually get done, or is this much ado about nothing? I mean, if Rock and Roman showed up, it's not happening. Rock and Roman is not showing up. I don't. Yeah, I don't know. You <laughs> never know. <laughs> what the fuck else are they gonna do? These two aren't in a match together. <laughs> so, uh, who? I don't know. I, 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 so Seb's like, I'm gonna be your shield, which is like cute, whatever. Whoever wrote that, Aww, <laughs> you know, muffin. While, while, like. <laughs> Cause they they've been messing with uh, they mess with Cody's match like they <laughs> Cody and Cody and Drew put on a banger of an opening match for Raw like they opened up Raw with Cody and Drew in a singles match, yeah, and it was absolutely buck wild. And then Jay Uso they did they did the WrestleMania 39 finish. Jay came in to distract the ref, and then Solo came in a black hoodie and <laughs> gave Cody the Samoan spike, and Drew beat him with a claymore. So the whole thing now is they're just going to terrorize. Uh, they're going to terrorize Cody. So, like, it would make sense if they showed up. They're not advertised for the event at all. Yeah. This Hulk Hogan comes out. <laughs> In Australia. <laughs> I am a real Australian. <laughs> I will say of all of, of all of all the like people's uh social media accounts, Grayson Wall is absolutely hysterical. He was he took a picture of him on his flight back to Australia. He goes, I'm halfway through this book and I'm closer to finishing this story than Cody is. Ooh. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> so like, I mean, do do we get kind of a, a romantic argument with Cody and Seth? Um where Cody accepts his help or or what? Like, here's the does this lead to a tag match at Mania? I I hope not. I don't care what the tag match. 
Yeah. Like I don't I don't I don't need everyone wrestling on two nights of WrestleMania. Like I just, just don't need yeah, it. You're two nights for a reason. Like the I, and you don't need to injure stuff more than what he <laughs> already is. <laughs> yeah. It's like dude, this 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 story right here doesn't need Seth. No. Like at all. In fact, it has nothing to do with Seth. <laughs> as much as he wants it to be. It doesn't. Seth's just <laughs> trying to stay like, relevant as long as he can. <laughs> this is a, why are you still here? <laughs> Go home. Stay on Raw and just fight there. <laughs> fight your Drew. <laughs> yeah, dude. Stupid. It, it's it's gonna be it is gonna be a weird Seth's patch. Stop it, Wade. <laughs> Stop it so much, so much. But that is. That, it, this is going to be an interesting segment because this is going to tell you a lot about what they're going to do going into Mania. And that, folks, is all of Elimination Chamber. Four matches, one talk show, probably a lot of promotional video packages and all that stuff just to waste time and to try to keep you awake uh, at 5 a.m. on the East Coast, 2 a.m. on the West Coast uh, for this event. So final uh, final Chamber our final PLE leading into Mania because then after that it'll be like 30 days or less than 30 days. Um or getting close to that point, uh, till WrestleMania in, in Philadelphia. Uh, so Mr. Tarasak, how many crowns would you give this crown? This one being the worst 10 being the best show in the world. Um, I got a strong seven. Yeah, I like that. I, I like that. I'm, I'm, I'm going to, I don't expect much from this. Um, chambers. I mean, when you have a gimmick, this is like the last of a gimmick pay-per-views that they do. Uh, yeah. It's like the la- the only one that's left. Um, because I don't count Royal Rumble as a gimmick pay per view, which I guess it is technically. You can argue that. Uh, but this is like this all hinders on the Elimination Chamber uh, event and the matches, and they're gonna be good. I think they're both gonna be good. I think the men's are gonna outshine the women just by a little bit. Um, but I I, I don't expect crazy movement out of this event at all. So I'm gonna go seven point five. It's going to be a okay. good average pay per view. I feel like a lot of it depends on number one, the chamber, and number two, how re- how crazy that Aussie crowd is going to be. Yeah, the crowd's going to be fun. Yeah. I mean, they're, the they're, they're in a job. Jo- you've seen that stadium. That stadium's huge. It's the uh, it's a soccer stadium or a rugby stadium? Something like that. It's massive. Yeah. It is. Dude, you want to You know about the, uh, the Daytona 500? You mean that's fuck that, that stadium seat? It's huge. They've, they've held like a, uh, they held a football game in the, in the, um, in the in the infield, like a college football game. Yeah, it sits like over a hundred thousand people. Yeah, it's a huge place. It's fucking for, for NASCAR. <laughs> yeah, it's fucking nuts in the middle of Florida. It's Central <laughs> Florida, dude. Like what? <laughs> it's huge, absolutely nuts. huge. Um, absolutely nuts. No, it it, it is. NASCAR is, is a is a nutso concept in and of itself. Um, I just forget how popular NASCAR is. It is. Like I, I honestly forget that NASCAR is like an actual sport. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm. I guess at this point in my life, I'm more privy to F1. Uh, so, yeah. Yes, thank you. I mean, very different. Yeah. Same sport. Same sport. Yeah. I, I mean, I know F1 people who like look down on NASCAR. I mean, I, I get it because <laughs> F1 is more. It's cooler. It's not just a circle. Yeah. But there, there is a difficulty to NASCAR. Like the physics of that, of like driving in a car like that is kind of nuts. Yeah, you know how strong your forearms need to be. <laughs> yeah, to hold the wheel. <laughs> yeah, it's you. You they they're ripped. <laughs> NASCAR drivers are. Yeah. Swole. You don't. There are there are no heavy set NASCAR drivers for a reason. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They all drink milk after for a reason as well. <laughs> yeah, just to like hydrate. Like, so the thing with I know we're, I know we're on a wrestling podcast, but I got to talk about this because I've I played on like you know Forza games and whatnot, and they're uh, and you can play on like the Daytona Five Hundred. You know what makes it really freaking hard? The turns are at like a forty five degree angle, and you're going two hundred miles an hour. Yeah, you Physics down. is not in your in your favor when that happens. Yeah, you gotta, like we gotta really slow down. It's no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like it's like it's not it's not that they're running in a circle. They're running in a circle on an angle, and when you're going that fast, you literally if you don't control it, you will crash into the wall every time. Yeah, <laughs> you know, 
Uh, I think it's called centrifugal force. I don't know. I, I never took physics, but you know, I stayed at the Holiday Inn Express one night. <laughs> um, so, so, so there's that. But alas, folks, elimination chamber happening this Saturday freaking morning. I can't believe I'm actually going to going to try this out and see if I actually survive. Um, I got to remember I'm in my mid thirties, but be it as it may, that concludes our show this week. Again, I told you it's going to be short. We're just going through elimination chamber, some Hollywood rock, some WWE world. Um, and I mean, that's pretty much it. When we come back next week, we're going to talk about, I'm going to give you guys a little preview. Uh, next week is uh, a company that we all really like to actually, um, you and your wife have pancakes on deck. Wade, I will be down in Florida for that. If you're going to have pancakes for elimination chamber, um, Next week, we're going to come back on Tuesday. Again, we're going to do another preview of AEW Revolution. You know, that other that other wrestling promotion that people sometimes talk about now. Um, but AEW Revolution is, is very significant for maybe one big thing. It is potentially, and more than likely, I hope, hopefully more than likely, the last match in the career of Sting. So we're going to do a lot of commentary about Sting. And his career, and the fact that they made him a tag team champion with Darby Allen right before this event, <laughs> um, only to drop to the fucking Young Bucks. That's the story right now. Um, yep. <laughs> <laughs> yep. You know? Um, so it's going to be a lot of Sting retrospect. It's going to be a lot of AEW Revolution. They do have a gr- potentially great triple threat for the AEW World title uh, a- as well. Um, we're going to review that card, but again, we're going to talk a lot about Sting. It's going to be a pretty fun show, I think, because I've met Sting. Will, I think you met Sting as well, the same the same WrestleMania, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, very briefly. Yeah, yeah, Steve. Steve's great, because <laughs> he wasn't Sting. He was Steve that time. <laughs> um, but Steve's awesome. Uh, so we're going to talk about that. Like Sting, again, one of the most iconic characters uh, in the history of all of pro wrestling for all the right reasons, and almost a member of the NWO, the original NWO. Until you know, creative control, brother, uh, and all of that stuff. So be be in, be on the lookout for that uh, next week. But with that being said, ready to get the show on the road? Yeah, you are. Hit that music if you can find it. There it is. I I <laughs> Damn, just want to make sure. Ladies and gentlemen, you have been listening to Kings of the Rings podcast, episode number 368, our first ever Chamber Danger show, which I'm really upset it took us, what, nine years to get Chamber Danger? Way too long. Anyway, the first of many Chamber Dangers for as long as we do this podcast. I'm your host, King Ricky Rose. You can find me at Ambassador Biggs across all social media outlets, B-I-G-Z, Ambassador Biggs. Will is very happy about that because I'm finally back on all of that social media. Find Kings of the Rings podcast at KOTR underscore podcast across all social media outlets. Like, share, subscribe, leave us five-star reviews. Links to all of that are in the descriptions below. We are a member of Wrestle Addict Radio, the cure for the Common Wrestling Podcast. Find Wrestle Addict Radio socials at addict underscore wrestle on Twitter and at Wrestle Addict Radio, all one word, everywhere else. Will Tarashock. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Will Tarashock. It's T and Thomas, A-R-A-S-H. UK, uh, yeah, all all my sets. I love I love spell my name like that. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's been a wild ride. I'm excited for the show. I'm excited. I'm actually wrestling is hot again. Wrestling is very hot again, and I can't wait to go to WrestleMania. Uh, I need another vacation. Even I just got back from one. So, <laughs> that was fun, Ricky. I gotta tell you all about Harry Potter World and Universal because that's where we were last. All week. the things I so, all the things tuned. I know nothing about, which I should if you seen my dating history um <laughs> everyone stay tuned for the post show but yeah ricky next week's gonna be fun talking all about sting and steve borden and uh why why uh joker sings the best sting oh, oh, oh that's gonna be a good conversation that is gonna be a very very good conversation yeah folks uh when we come back next week we're gonna talk about sting aw revolution hopefully kayfabe is feeling better and they will be back as well because i would love to see kayfabe's take on uh sting as well so if you're if you're watching us right now live stick around for the post show. If not, be like Slack and just, you know, fuck you, Slack. So goodbye. Good night. We'll see you soon. We don't need to find a way to get Slack on, or maybe not. We'll figure it out. Anywho, fuck you, Slack. We'll see you later. This has been a Wrestle Attic Radio branded podcast.